I'm not going to lie, I hesitated a lot when making this video. The main reason why, as you can imagine, is I'm a guy. So I don't know what a lot of women drivers experience when it comes to Lyft and Uber. However, I've gotten this question so many times from a lot of my girlfriends, considering if they want to drive for Lyft and Uber, especially online. I've had a lot of people hit me up saying, hey Mark, you know, I appreciate all these Lyft and Uber videos, but do you think it's okay if I drive? I mean, I'm a girl, I don't know if it's safe or not safe if I drive. So I actually consulted with a lot of my girlfriends who drive for like an Uber, any single time here in LA that I have like a woman driver, I'd say, hey, you know me asking, what is it like? You know, I have this Lyft and Uber YouTube channel. I just wanna get your perspective because obviously I can't speak from my own experience, obviously, because I'm a guy. So what is it like? First off, I wanna say that at least here in LA, and I feel like even when I travel around, I feel like I'm not gonna lie, it's about 50-50, especially here in LA. I'd say half the time I get a guy, half the time I get a girl. Maybe five years ago, that wasn't the case. But being honest, if let's say you're a bit like, oh, I don't know if I wanna drive with an Uber because most of the drivers are male. Being honest, I'd say here in LA at least, it's about 50-50. Even when I travel around, it seems like it's about 50-50. Half the time to get a guy, half the time to get a girl. The second thing I wanna say is, well, what is it like driving overall? Now, when I talked to all my girlfriends, when I interviewed all of these drivers when traveling around, every single one of them said this, look, tell your subscribers it's not as bad as you think. Especially going into it, you may be a little bit nerve wracked. And let's be honest, even for me, guy or girl, it's a little bit nerve wracking when you first start driving, right? But they're like, look, you know, it's really not that bad. The worst that happens is you might have a guy hit on you maybe when he's drunk. That's about it. They're like, that's the absolute worst that's ever happened. Now, of course, and I have to stress this point, we do hear all these stories about sexual assault or left from Uber drivers being assaulted. You know, those do happen, but I will say there are very far and few between. If you do the math out of all the rides happening with Lyft and Uber and those amount of cases that get reported, they're very, very, very far and few between. However, that being said, even though, like I said, all my girlfriends that I talked to, all the drivers that I talked to said, look, it's really not that bad at all. It's not as bad as you think. You know, tell your subscribers that, hey, go for it. Like you make a lot of money. I do wanna now talk about five ways to be as safe as possible when driving. And one thing I do wanna stress too, when it comes to these five tips, these are not just for girls, these are for guys as well. Here are five ways to be safer when driving for Lyft and Uber. Number one, have a dash cam. I've said this before in so many other videos, but this is big for a couple different reasons. One, if someone knows they're being recorded, of course, that puts them a little more on edge. So let's say a guy's in the car and he like wants to spit game or whatever, and he's a little drunk, he might see that camera and be like, oh, I don't know if I wanna be recorded trying to shoot my shot, so to speak. And another thing is the legal situation as well. Let's say something happens, even not even related to your passenger. Let's say someone rear ends you. Let's say someone, I don't know, you get into an accident. Someone says, oh, it's your fault. Well, now you have the footage just in case. The amount of money you're gonna spend on a dash cam is so small to compared to the benefits the dash cam provides you. Number two, avoid nights. Now, when I talked to all my girlfriends and a bunch of drivers when interviewing them, this was the number one piece of advice I got from them. And that is they said, hey, look, you know, if let's say someone wants to drive and they're a bit worried about, you know, just being safe, just avoid Friday and Saturday nights, maybe even Thursday nights, just to be as careful as possible. That was the number one piece of advice I got to relay on for this video. So yes, like say if you do want to drive, but you're a little bit worried, honestly, morning and evening commutes are great times to make a lot of money. Saturday and Sunday during the day too, actually, because as you can imagine, like say you go out, you crash at your friend's place, you wake up Saturday or Sunday morning, sometimes those surge rates are really high. And another big pro tip, and I've talked about this before in another video, is what I like to call the pregame hours. So this is, I find from like 5 p.m. to maybe about like 8 or 9 p.m. And this is when people are going to their friend's place to pregame. So they're going out in a sense, but they're not drunk. They're coherent, right? They're not gonna be all over the place. But overall, if you do wanna be as safe as possible, just avoid Friday and Saturday nights. Number three, avoid bad rides. Now let's say someone's bringing you to a really sketchy area in your town or city. Of course, just reject that ride, get a different one. Let's say you're driving somebody and the GPS is bringing you through a dangerous area, take maybe a more circuitous route. Now I know, you may be like, well Mark, I don't know because I don't want the passenger to get mad at me, I feel like you could just vocalize it to the passengers, say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna take a different route just because I know people who have driven through this area. It's a very dangerous area. 
just to be as safe as possible for not only my safety, but your safety as well, I want to take a different route that might take a little bit longer, but is way safer overall. I feel like that's a very reasonable thing to say. Another thing I will say is to avoid anybody that has a low rating. Now, this is kind of a tricky topic because you never know. Maybe somebody's fine and the, pa and the driver did not like them or whatever. But overall, I'd say that you're way better erring on the side of caution. So let's say that rating pops up and it's like, say, a 2.2 or I don't know. Maybe be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to wait for like a 4.5, right? Just to be as safe as possible. I remember, and this is true, I drove somebody. I remember their rating was so low that it almost shocked me. I was like, wait, can you even take a Lyft or Uber with a rating this low? I think it was like a 1.8 or 1.9. I'm not exaggerating. Guy gets in the car. He was fine. He was a little drunk. You know, he was your cliche frat guy. I drove him home. He actually wasn't an issue at all. However, who knows if let's say he was in a different car, maybe he was a bit rowdy, maybe he was way too flirty and crossed a line. You never know what happens in other rides. So that's why I suggest that even though, yes, you might get a passenger with a low rating and they might be fine, I would suggest erring on the side of caution. Number four, share your location. This is now getting on the side of worst case scenario, but of course, having at least a backup plan is never a bad option. So what you could do on your phone, whether you have Android or iPhone, there's different apps that can do this. You can share your location with friends, family, etc. And by doing that, you can even text your friends saying, hey, just letting you know, um, it's my first time driving for Lyft and Uber. I'm driving on a Friday night. You know, I just, just to be safe, I'm gonna share my location with you just so in case you see me stop somewhere for a while or like say something seems a little bit weird just text me or call me and maybe as well for you it might give you a nice peace of mind knowing like hey in case something does happen and that way it adds an extra level of security number five have pepper spray now i will say i did some research for this video about does pepper spray count as a lethal weapon because as you can imagine having a gun or knife not allowed when driving but pepper spray is in a unique category and Lyft and Uber are in kind of like a vague area about if pepper spray is allowed or not. Doesn't matter, have it on you, honestly. Like you're way better off having pepper spray. And again, something really bad happens, someone tries to attack you, someone crosses the line, whatever the case is, you're way better off defending yourself and having to deal with Lyft and Uber later than not having that pepper spray. And especially with pepper spray, it's a non-lethal way to avert somebody if they, are, again, are trying to attack you, they're getting too physical, whatever the case is. Having it is always a good idea just to be safe. And now a bonus tip, and that is to be a delivery driver. Now I wanna say my goal wasn't to scare anybody by making this video, right? I, I went to very worst case scenario land for a lot of these examples and a lot of these tips. However, like I said, I, I, you know, I was very on the fence about making this video because obviously, like I said, numerous times, I'm a guy, so I don't know what it's like, which is why I really consulted with a lot of drivers and a lot of my girlfriends who drive with an Uber because, hey, their experience is way more relevant than my own experience. And one thing as well when talking to them and other people is they said, hey, you know what? A lot of people get into Lyft and Uber, why? Because of flexible schedule, you wanna make side cash, you know, uh, you can make good money doing it, you can have instant cash outs, why not drive for Uber Eats or drive for another delivery app? This is a great way to get all the benefits of being a driver without having to get all the security issues and without having that feeling of, oh my God, what is my next passenger gonna be like? You can make a lot of money as a delivery driver. I know people have done it and they can make bank. And the great part is too, as you can imagine, this is kind of like a tricky thing, like I said, to avoid Friday and Saturday nights earlier in this video. But for a lot of drivers, they know they can make the most amount of money driving on Friday and Saturday nights. So let's say if you're on the fence, you're like, shoot, I want to work on a Friday and Saturday night to make that money, but I'm just a little bit afraid dealing with drunk people. Well, hey, maybe during the week you drive for Lyft and Uber, then only on Friday and Saturday nights when, again, the peak's high, the surge is high, and maybe things cost a lot more and more people are ordering food, you drive for DoorDash or Postmates or Uber Eats, whatever the case is. And that's why I suggest being a delivery driver because it's not a matter of, do I drive for Lyft and Uber or be a delivery driver, it's why not both? If let's say you wanna be as safe as possible, do both, combine the two and make as much money as possible.